So long, New York. Hello, Boston. From the Big Apple to Beantown for the second leg of the FedEx Cup playoffs, the Deutsche Bank Championship begins on Friday. With Amanda Balionis, I'm John Swantek. 125 players qualified for the playoff opener last week, but only 100 will make it to Beantown. After this Monday's Labor Day finish, 30 more will be sent packing. As we shift from Liberty National to TPC Boston this week, we'll take a look at the FedEx Cup playoff schedule. The 70 players who survive will be idle next week before teeing it up at the BMW Championship just outside of Chicago, with only 30 advancing from there to the Tour Championship presented by Coca-Cola in Atlanta, where the top five control their own destiny. Adam Scott is currently in the top five after beginning the playoffs as the 11th seed. The Masters champion jumped all the way to second after that victory at the Barclays, which surprised a lot of people, well, including the Aussie himself. Scott was six strokes off the lead to start the final round, but delivered a flawless 66 to post 11 under par. And then Amanda, he waited waited as the challengers came after him. And that was really cool, seeing him on the range watching as guy after guy just kept falling apart. He said, I thought I had no shot, and then comes out the victor. Tiger Woods was threatening until this happened at 13. A pain-inducing bogey after a shot that was way offline literally brought him to his knees with back spasms. He would battle through those spasms for the rest of the round, mounting a comeback with birdies on 16 and 17 to get to 10 under par within one of the lead and then needed just one more birdie on 18 to force a playoff from just off the back of the green. So Scott was able to dodge that bullet and then this one when Gary Woodland missed three straight birdie attempts inside 10 feet to close his round leaving Scott surprised but overjoyed and holding the trophy after taking the playoff opener at the Barclays. All right, so let's take a look at the FedEx Cup standings through the Barclays. Take a look at that. Adam Scott, as you mentioned, went all the way from 11th to second. That means that he'll be teeing it up with Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson in the first round. Matt Kuchar got bumped down to fourth, followed by Justin Rose, Brant Snedeker, and Graham Dillette after a final round 65. He is now in seventh place in the FedEx Cup standings. And then, of course, there's Jordan Spieth, the young superstar that broke through this season, the youngest guy to make it in the playoffs and definitely the youngest to break it into the top 10. Yep, and uh, Woodland jumped all the way from 60th, by the way. So the players are going to be grouped together in the first two rounds again this week and throughout the playoffs, in fact, based on their points position. So we're going to get marquee groupings throughout the field. It's like an all-star game, really, and it's highlighted by the top three this Friday in Boston. You could not script this any better. Tiger Woods, Adam Scott, and Phil Mickelson should all be highly motivated and inspired by being in each other's company. Tiger and Phil have had this dance many times before. In their previous 31 meetings, Woods has bested Mickelson 15 to 13, and they've shot the same score three times, pretty close. Phil has shot 64 twice in 2007 at the Deutsche Bank Championship and in the final round at Pebble Beach back in 2012. Those two are also paired together in the first, second, and final rounds in Boston at the 2007 Deutsche Bank Championship. What a Labor Day duel it was that Monday in front of huge crowds at TPC Boston. The atmosphere was electric. Both players battling head-to-head -head while holding off the rest of the field. And in the end, Phil 66 bested Tiger 67, leading to a two-shot victory in the second-ever playoff event. So those guys are at the top, but the playoff fate of other players further down the points list is far less certain. The bubble boys are once again in a position of having to survive and advance as five players managed to do last week in New York at the Barclays. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bummed out that uh, Ben Crane is not on that bubble again. No more videos, I don't think, but let's take a look at the bubble boys. Martin Keimer, he began before the Barclays, 103rd, worked his way into number 90, but remember, only the top 70 will advance. Greg Chalmers also working his magic. Eric Compton improving from outside the bubble to inside to make it to the second stage of the playoffs, uh, followed by Stuart Appleby. And then, of course, Camilo Vigegas, he didn't have to do anything to work his way in. He just waited as Aaron Badley bogeyed his final three holes to drop to 101st, which played Camilo in. So for players like Keimer and Compton, the numbers can be dizzying, but uh, they understand that the most important numbers are the low ones that they post on the course, and they're critical. Yeah, I believe after every round you have a look at it, um, what position you're in. But, uh, you know, my brother is very good at math, and he said, you know, you have to finish top 24, and then you should be okay. And so that's, that's my goal. I trust him on his, on his counting and his math skills. 
Um, so that's the goal, you know, to finish as high as possible, obviously. You do have to keep an eye and ask people, you know, well, you know, where do I stand? Because that dictates, even on 18, coming down the stretch here, whether you're going to go for it in two. Like today I hit driver three with the middle of the green. Obviously it's soft today. If you make up an eagle or have a chance at an eagle, one shot made it, it makes a difference between your whole year. Now comes the favorite part. I let you off the hook last week. We did not. What are you talking about? I did. I made you pick a FedEx Cup winner, and I think you chose like five, but that's not even Kucher. the point. Matt will <laughs> I, lift think, the cup. I think it was Tiger Woods. I'll have to go back and look at the tape. But you do have to pick a winner this week in Beantown. Who you got? Defending champion, Rory McElroy. Okay. He's flying under the radar. I think his game is showing some signs of life. It's been a lost season for Rory, but I think he can salvage what's left of it with a good performance over the next three playoff events. I really think, with all the intention, on Scott and Tiger and Mickelson and the boys at the top that Rory is going to sneak in under the wire and steal it this week in Boston. I really do. Okay, first of all, there's anything under the radar about Rory McIlroy, but <laughs> we'll let you off the hook. Yeah. And he's not heartbroken like everyone thought initially no, maybe he was. He and what do we call them? Wasna Rory? Rory? Sure. Exactly. Whatever their couple name is. They are still going strong, people. But my pick this week is the man with the greatest playoff beard around, Mr. Graham Dillette. He had that final round Good Sunday, pick. 65, catapulted up the leaderboard. And two times right. last week at the Barclays, he did not miss a fairway. Accuracy is key when you hit a lot of fairways, you hit a lot of greens, and then you take the trophy. Trying to make that President's Cup team as well, so he's up to 10th on the points list. He's got a lot to play for. I like that pick. He does. Keep that playoff beard going, Graham. We're confident in it. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at our air times. Remember, it is a Friday start on Golf Channel beginning at 3 p.m. Eastern time until 6. Sirius XM PGA Tour Radio Live play-by-play, -play, which also streams on PGATour.com, begins at noon. On Sunday, Golf Channel will have your coverage beginning at 1 p.m., and NBC will pick it up at 2.30. And for the special Monday Labor Day finish, Golf Channel will have your coverage beginning at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time with NBC picking it up at 1.